Hello students, welcome to Statics. I'm Dr. Stewart, and today we're gonna to do an example for the moment of inertia. Now this example is example 10.1, coming from Hibbler's Statics book. In this example, we're asked to find the area moment of inertia about A, the centroidal X prime axes, B, the axes XB, and C, to find the polar moment of inertia about of Z prime, right? So let's look at the area that we want to find this moment of inertia uh, about. Let's go ahead and just draw some of the uh, coordinates that we're given here, where the corner of this rectangle is going to give us the X, B, and a Y, B coordinate system. And where at the centroid of this rectangle, we find the X prime and the Y prime coordinate, uh, uh, um, uh, the X prime and Y prime axes. Now we are given some dimensional information about this rectangle. So we're given that it has a height. And then it also has a base, b over 2, b over 2, that form its dimensions. And we're pre-told what the differential area is that we would use, what the differential area should be when we're trying to find the moments of inertia. So this is pretty well illustrated. We'll just put a couple of more things, such as the y prime, which is the distance from the centroid to the bottom of the uh, elemental area. And then also the dy prime, which is the portion uh, of the, 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 the width, the incremental width of this element. So now let's go ahead and start solving this problem. We are given some information. We're given that the differential area is going to be equal to b times the dy prime. And where b is simply the, the base of that element, and then dy, that is the, the height of that element. So let's get started solving this problem. Let's start with part a, where we want to find the moment uh, of inertia about the centroid and axes uh, x prime. In that case, since we are sitting at the centroid of this rectangle, we'll go ahead and directly use the integral for finding the uh, moment of inertia about that x prime axis, where the integral is the integral of y prime squared times dA. Now, in order to, to solve this integral, we'll need to replace dA with the dA that we were given. So we feed that in. And then we integrate over the interval of the, of the, the, the height of this rectangle from negative h over 2. So, we're, so our, we're starting from point C. So we're going down by negative h over 2 all the way up to positive h over 2. And once we've performed this integration, we'll find the closed form equation for a rectangle. If we, are find, if we want to find the moment of inertia of that rectangle, the closed form solution becomes this, where i uh, x prime is equal to 1 over 12 times the base times the height cubed. And then we could repeat this process in order to find the uh, moment of inertia about the y-axis. We can find the closed form solution for that as well. And that would be, once we solve it out, 1 over 12 times the height times the base cubed, where we switch those two terms. So we got the first part done, and we had to do a little bit of calculus, but it's pretty straightforward. 
Now let's try part B, which is a little more challenging. In part B, we're asked to find what is the mo area moment of inertia about the X, B axes. In this case, we'll need to apply the parallel axes theorem because the moment of inertia, we tend to want to find that from the centroid. And if we're not acting at the centroid, if we're not acting at X prime, we need to make a modification. And that's where the parallel axis theorem comes in, where the moment of inertia about the XB axes. All right, so let's apply the parallel axis theorem. So um, we're going to take the area moment of inertia about the centroid, and we're going to add that extra term that is going to allow us to find the, the, the area moment of inertia from XB. And the extra term is going to be the area that we're interested in times dy squared, where dy is the distance between the XB axes and the X prime axes. So we'll just go ahead and take the X, uh, uh, the, the I X prime that we had, the one we previously found, and we'll add the area of our rectangle and the distance that's between XB and XB prime. So that distance of H divided by two, that is the distance we're going to use. And then once we've done that and we add everything up together, we find that the area moment of, of inertia about the XB axis is equal to one third B base times height cubed. And then again, we can find an equivalent version for the uh, moment of inertia around the YB axis is one third the height times the base cubed. <coughs> now let's do part C of this problem, and that is to find the polar moment of inertia. The polar moment of inertia represents a almost like the R vector for this problem. Rather than being on the X axis or the Y axis, it's, it's like we were to switch into R and theta coordinate system. And it's very easy for us to find. The polar moment of inertia is simply equal to the sum of the moment of inertia on the X axis and the moment of inertia on that Y axis. So if we're going to find it from the centroid, it'll be equal to uh, one divided by 12 times the base times the height, and then in brackets, the height squared plus the base squared. So dealing with these moment of inertia problems is fairly straightforward. We start with creating our diagram, illustrating what our differential area is and where our positions are. And then we go through and do the calculus, forming the integral, making sure that everything is in terms of one thing. So in this case, we, we did uh, y prime. So we did the, the derivative of y prime, right? And then solving for these specific equations. Now in the book, for rectangles and circles and for very simple geometry, the area moment of inertia is with respect to the centroid, that those are all found in the book in an appendix section. And they're very easy to look up. When we're solving real problems, the most uh, real problems with complex geometries, we are most often going to be applying the parallel axis theorem. So I think we're done with this example. Uh, there's a couple more examples that we're gonna do. So I'll see you in the next video.